Hello, welcome to this episode of Hypnotist Bernie Six Plus. Who's joining us tonight is Violet. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Um, you have been here. Um, uh, first time you've been here was two thousand seven, eight. Really, was it that long? Was it ago? that long ago? But I remember <laughs> you were in the uh, you were in the old studio, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it was a long time ago. We still have the be live word in the back. Yeah. So, uh, what are you up to lately? Um, probably all kinds of things since then. But um, tell us some stories. We want to catch up with you. What kind of stories? Uh, what have you been doing? Um, I like to hike uh, in my spare time. I love being outdoors. Mm-hmm. Um, but what have changed really since I guess like two thousand? Let's give us some room. Two thousand ten. I think it might be earlier than that, but let's do two thousand ten. What has changed? All kinds of things have probably changed. I don't know. Um, hmm. Like um. Did you learn anything new since 2010? I've probably learned more things than I could list. <laughs> okay. Name a few. Um. Hmm. What did I learn? Um, you take any classes, or I've actually probably t- taken all kinds of classes um, because uh, I'm a very curious person by nature. Uh, mm-hmm. But I also, you know, I like to read and whatnot. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, I've probably read everything from self-help help books to survivalism in the wild um oh, yeah. how do i identify mushrooms oh really? like all kinds of things um, can you identify mushrooms i can identify um several different types of mushrooms that are regional to this area because okay. it changes up a little bit um but you can tell which one we can eat and which one we can't well, they say um, every mushroom can be eaten, just some of them can only be eaten once. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and some of them have different levels of okay. like toxicity and whatnot too. So. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Some so- some could be eaten twice, right? There's there's some that are but like do you the, forage? Can you go and forage? I'm I do know how to identify a lot of different plants okay. um, in the area and stuff too. And um, I actually do um, work on a farm. And uh, one of the things we do is we make um, tinctures okay. and we prepare things that are wildly harvested, but also things that are grown oh, on yeah. the farm that are more. Um, they're not. They're not wild. They're what, what what kind of tincture um, have you made? I guess I've made tincture from all kinds of different plant matter. Oh. Um, uh, just about everything and anything that they have on the farm, and um, and yeah. Oh yeah. Like what? What kind of? Uh, I, I, I'm guessing it's for medicine or medicinal purpose, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, uh, what kind of ailment could you could you tincture do for uh, your friends? Well, I mean, there's probably uh, something that would be supportive for just about any any condition, really. Um. um what if somebody is stressed? Do you have like a tincture for that? Mm, um, there's probably a variety of different routes that you could go. Um, 
And it might even depend on like the root of the stress, maybe the herb that might okay. be suggested. Um, one that I really like that's very mild, very gentle is um, the wild roses, not the cultivated roses because they okay. don't have properties anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I'll make a tincture from those and those can be really good, they say, uh, for stress related to grieving or loss, oh, really? especially. Um, but that's very calming, very mild, very gentle. Is the tincture made with uh, water or oil? I actually usually use um, a vodka because it oh, lasts like that, longer. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out I've been drinking medicine. <laughs> oh, I, I, do you, can you make like a cocktail with tincture? Actually, people are doing stuff like that. Yeah. Um, they uh, infuse oh, yeah. with herbs. Nice. In in their vodka and stuff like that. And so your bartender is actually your doctor. <laughs> Please, this is just only work with vodka or other strong spirits. Um, it's actually suggested to use um, what is it? Oh, Everclear is supposed to be even better. What is that? They ask. Um, it's another clear alcohol. Okay. And supposedly, I don't know if it's because it's a higher proof that it extracts it better. I can't remember how that Is it goes. like homemade? Or can you find that at a liquor store? You can get it at a okay. liquor store, but I know that people do make their own oh, homemade yeah. Everclear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Would, would it work with like scotch or, or like tequila or like gin? Gin itself is kind of like herb made right like, i've never all kinds asked of herbs was in the someone it feels in the gym what uh, i've never asked like one of my teachers what their thoughts are on oh. things uh, outside of everclear and vodka i just know that those ones are um usually recommended and they also do like you know your teacher could make a lot of money opening like a medicinal bar you know Like a, like you could get a cocktail for like depression. Maybe you can write that off the insurance. <laughs> what what else? What other kind of tincture do you uh, have you made? Um, like for example, like if you are tired and and you need something to for like a boost, like what would you recommend? Like instead of coffee, can I get some tincture from from Violet? You know, that was actually a question that came up. I was like, what do people use to wake them up? Yeah, and yeah. my teacher was like, high doses of caffeine. <laughs> there, is I don't is think there something like, in nature that could replace coffee? That you could make a tincture? I don't know if there is something good that in a stimulating way, like there might be some people approaching it more from oh this might help you get a better night's rest therefore okay. giving you more energy or you know it, it's kind of a different route is there any tincture that could make you like prepare for exams and stuff like that that keeps you mentally focused that's a good question i'm not 100 percent sure on the best what would um, you recommend Hmm. Mental focus. I don't know for that one. I'd have to. I'd have to look that one up, because we we're kind of learning all kinds of stuff, but for kind of different areas of the body. So we didn't really focus on that. Okay. So what other like, um, how how does that system work? So does it target like a ailments or does it target like a a organ? It depends on, um, you know, how you look at it. Um, uh, Is it like disease based? Like, like this tincture target this illness or this tincture target boosts that function? You get the difference? I think it, it could go either way. Right. Uh, depending on what it is and what someone's views are. Uh, there, obviously, there are certain things that there has been been 
more scientific based studies to prove how well certain oh, yeah. um, herbs work on certain conditions. Um, and then there's other stuff that, you know, it's more folk remedy. Um, and we don't have the science to back it up. Oh, yeah. Um, so it really depends. Um, on which herb and which condition. Do you forage the herb or could you like find those in like whole foods? That that depends too on what it is. Um, and also, you know, someone's, you know, the region that someone's in or the time of year. Uh, a lot of the times um, we'll be foraging stuff and then also harvesting stuff out of the garden in the summer and in the fall around here. Um, and that's kind of, you know. What, what's like a signature New England tincture? A typical New England tincture? Or like a signature one, like people come to New England for this particular herb. Is there? Well, so I can't say a lot of people come to New England for this, but one thing that I have found that's like, I feel like it's very New England is the cranberries oh. that we have, the wild cranberries. Okay. And making a tincture out of that, and that's good uh, for anybody that is, uh, say, prone to uh, like infections in the urinary tract or okay. to help support that. Okay. Um, so how does, how, how are tinctures made? Um, well, there's a couple of different methods. I okay. am a fan of the folk method, which is pretty Walk simple. Us it, yeah. Um, step by step so that we can all make this at home. <laughs> Kids try this at home. <laughs> or maybe don't, <laughs> Depends. but so, I mean, the folk method is really simple. It's a mason jar and you cut up your herbs um, and you mash it down with a, a pestle to pack it into the jar. And then um, you top it with vodka and you want to make sure that the vodka is covering all of the plant material. Okay. So it's like a lot of stuff in the jar. Though. Yeah. Okay. And it pretty much just needs to be shaken like once a day. Okay. And um, do you have to mash the cranberry or just put the whole fruit in there? I um, I kind of you know so if some of them are still a little hard, I'll cut them. Okay. And then mash them down into the um, you know, get as many as I can in there. Okay. And um, how long? How long should it be? I leave it for a month okay. and then strain the plant material off Okay. Uh, and just the, the vodka in the end. Okay. Does, does the vodka lose its uh, alcoholic potency? Does it, does it, should the alcoholic potency be diminished or should it be up to keep the potency? Uh, I don't the think potency? the um, potency of the alcohol changes at all. Okay. I think it does. Although I can't say that for sure, but I don't think it does. Does it? Is it necessary to keep the percentage of alcohol for the tincture to work, or does the alcohol just help extract the the medicinal uh, ingredients of the tincture? I think the alcohol helps extract it, and the alcohol also. Um, Makes it so it doesn't it doesn't spoil, well, that's um, true. Yeah. because people also do it with glycerin okay. to make an alcohol free version for anyone that can't have alcohol. Okay. But glycerin also will spoil a lot faster, and okay. it's also done with um, vinegar. But it that has won't taste good though. yeah yeah the aftertaste is a bit much <laughs> with the vinegar. Yeah, but so it's. Plants the only thing that goes into tincture. Um, Could it be like like animals or insects? I've never tried that, and I would. Did, did, yeah, okay. I'm just asking. I have no idea. There I've might be that. somebody I've out there. Yeah. Have you seen that? 
I have not. I oh, have yeah. not. And I've been to some creepy stores. Though, um, if you went to like a Chinese medicine store, you'll see like a tarantula or... The one time I have like heard of stuff like yeah. that in herbal medicine is the Chinese herbal medicine. I've right, seen yeah. uh, like different bugs that I guess will be have uh, right. healing properties, I guess. I don't know much about that, though. I do think it is interesting. I've just seen them. I never tried them. Not that I would. Have, would you ever work with ginseng? Have you know what I'm talking about? I love ginseng. Okay. That, have you tried it? I am. Um, you know, I used to do the ginseng extract, and maybe I should get yeah. back into that because thinking of it, they that do, is. They do that a lot in like in Asia, like China and Korea. They put a ginseng into like. Well, they don't do vodka over there, but like some clear, strong liquor. Um, that's a. Uh, that I guess that is the one herb that would be perfect for, uh, like you mentioned earlier, mental clarity right. and stimulation. And I, maybe I should maybe I should get back into oh, using yeah. ginseng yeah. now yeah. that you bring it up. Yeah, that's great. Um, so it's great catching up with you. So, like, uh, what would you like to accomplish with uh, hypnosis? I um, I would love to feel more confidence and okay, also. Um, living in the moment, being able to live in the moment and be more present. Okay. Tell me more. Like, when was the last time um, you you feel that you should be more in the moment, but you hadn't had a chance to? Um, I, I, I just noticed that sometimes, like, you know, maybe I'll be too caught up in my head with distractions and anxieties and Sometimes I'm like, ah, I should be enjoy being out where I am more than I am. <laughs> okay. Sometimes, you know, not always, but. Is there like a location where you wish that you are living the moments more or you were? I think maybe it can be in social settings, maybe, okay. maybe a little bit of social anxiety okay. distracting me. Could you name like um, an occasion that happened? Tell like us a, a story. Like a party or a, um, or a concert where there's a lot of people around, so there can be a lot of distractions. Okay. And I'm a little bit like in my head, look, ah, what's going on? What's going on here? What's going on there? And and I w and I wish that I was kind of just I was more there. I was enjoying the concert in front of me instead of oh, yeah. like being anxious about everything going on around me. I guess this was a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> oh yeah, what happened? Well, like I said, it was just like, you know, I I wish that I was more there, like present in the concert, but I was a little bit, you know, looking over there, looking over there, and my attention was a little divided on everything else going on around me, and. And maybe I wish that I was a little bit like more there and really excited for the concert. Okay. And what, how do you think it would come out differently had you been uh, fully engaged in the concert? Um, do you feel you have missed anything? missed anything it was still a good time um and and i guess that was just one more example but i do notice that the times that i that i do feel like i'm living a little bit more in the moment you know those are like the most memorable nights you know oh, yeah. the best times uh and then sometimes when i'm not living in the moment and i'm not more present and i'm not more there um those are times maybe where I feel a little bit like, oh, that was all right. You know, it falls a little flat or whatever. Oh, yeah. And how would you see yourself acting differently if everything works out? Well, being able to enjoy more of the show instead of being anxious and in my head. Okay. Do you think anxiety is more of an issue? than a lack of confidence or a need of confidence. How would you describe anxiety? Well, I know that anxiety can be the root of the lack of confidence. <laughs> so maybe, yeah. Maybe do, do you think that is, do you, do you link that? 
I'm sure it, it doesn't is. Doesn't have to. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. But is is that how you feel? That uh, you need to first overcome your anxiety, then you can be confident. You can be confident and and really shaking at the same time. You know. Oh. Okay. Like does ha- does that not cross? Have there ever crossed your mind that a really confident person could also be? Shaking and like feeling inside. Uh, uh, like, do you feel that they have to be mutually exclusive? I suppose they don't. Um, I guess like you I... can go give a great speech while at the same time you're feeling a lot of heat, you know. But if they were feeling truly confident, would they have those anxieties or? Or the anxi- I mean, with the anxiety. Why not? What? Why not though? Like, I don't know. Does it have to be? Can you like feel confident? Yet at the same time, feeling anxious. Like, how would you? How would your body describe anxiety? Um. I'm just checking the time there. If you're wondering why. I'm Moving my head a lot, wobbling my head a lot. How would my body describe anxiety? Mm-hmm. Uh, like the symptoms that I feel? Right. Um, How would you know you're experiencing anxiety? Uh, I'm like, I get, well, it's, it's hard to verbalize sometimes to think about. Okay. Um, but you, Just take it slowly, you know. Yeah. What, what's the first thing that comes to you when you believe you are experiencing anxiety? Uh, just feeling mentally, I guess, you know, maybe a little bit disconnected or confused, um, distracted, uh, racing heart, can't really pay attention, um, uh, having fear. Um, uh, okay, we'll have like 10 seconds and then we'll come back at 8.30. Well, we'll hold that thought and we'll continue this. Join me in uh, three minutes at 8.30. This is Hypnotist Bernie on CCTV9. All right, welcome back to this episode of Hypnotist Bernie Exposition. If you're just joining us now, uh, this show started at 8 o'clock and uh, this is the second half of the show. And we are here talking to Violet here. And we're helping her uh, to feel more confident. And then right now we um, we were just talking about how she feel anxiety when she's in a situation. Yes. And she feels that if she is less anxious, she will feel more confident. So uh, we were just talking a minute ago. Um, how does your body feel when you say you experiencing anxiety? Um, Do you uh, feel that right now? Uh, maybe a little bit, not okay. too much, but you know, there, there's a sense of uneasiness and, um, you know, rapid heart rate, um, feeling um, unfocused or panicked, um, you know, stuff like that. And. If you were fully confident in your word, how different would you feel using positive language, right? Without using the word lot, how would you believe you should feel when you are confident? Um, I suppose someone that is confident is, um, they're, they're in their power. Um, they're, I guess they're, they're, they're trusting that it's all going to work out and they're going to do well and they okay. believe it. Okay. Would the body feel different to you?
I'd like to think that it would, that they would be more at ease because uh, they're confident in their abilities, they're confident in what they're doing or, you know, whatever's going on. Now, go back to that social situation you talked about, um, I guess, a minute ago. Um, how would, if everything works out and, and you are absolutely confident in yourself, how different would the night turn out? I guess I would have, I would have been, maybe I would have been a little more relaxed. I don't know. <laughs> Do you think just feeling, how would you describe feeling relaxed? We're just expanding on that. Not, Not well, hmm. without, without using not, <laughs> is that, is that a requirement? Cause I was going to say, you know, you, you wouldn't be worried. Well, the thing is like, if you say not do something, you will, you will gravitate toward that something, right? You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So without, so so that makes it harder, but it also makes it more like permanent and real, you know? It's like, if I don't eat burger, what do I eat? So like, go, go, that direction is better than just not eating burger, you know? So, you know, maybe I'll have steak or something, you know? So without using not, what was the question again? Oh, yeah. Um, how would you describe, like, I guess, like, you use the word relaxed. Is, is that an ultimate goal? Yeah, I would, I would enjoy feeling more relaxed and at ease in general. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's try something different. So just close your eyes very briefly. So let's pretend you are really anxious, right? Back to that concert time. Where in the body do you feel this energy is blocked? Let's pretend in the everyday situation, your energy is just flowing very easily throughout you. You can just point or Maybe like here. Okay. I don't know. How do you feel over there? I I do see like a blockage, kind of like in this area. Did Did you ask me how I feel? Right. I get like like you said like a blockage. Okay, okay, you can open your eyes. So maybe we can just. Do you think that maybe we can clear that up? Do you feel that um, we don't have a lot of time? But do you feel like any other areas in your life are like kind of stuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Can you give us an example? Um, I guess, um, Well, there's there's some things that I feel maybe a little blocked with at times uh, dealing with my physical health, but then also um, you know recovering things from my upbringing. Okay. So I'm not going to put you on the spot, right? So usually, you can just nod or 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 use your body language to tell me. Um, so usually, it is something that you think you may have done or didn't do. And it's kind of like a guilt kind of blockage you can feel in the stomach. So um, 
maybe something you're promised but you didn't do or so I, that's why I said, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot. You don't have to tell me what, what the time you left your friend behind in, in you know, New York. Um, so if you can focus on clearing that part of your energy block, you can feel that um, you you stop, like, just by talking to you. And you can just watch yourself too, you know, uh, just watch yourself as in a as total stranger talking. You can tell. Something is like kind of like blocking your energy, and whoever is watching this show, you know, uh, those of you who practice Reiki or something, you can probably tell that too. So maybe once you clear that, you know, you can feel energy flowing more freely, and you can just you know how. Uh, sorry, Eddie, you know how to be confident. Right? It's not like a skill question. You get what I'm saying? I think so. Like you, you. If I just tell you, let's pre I want you to pretend to be confident for like 10 minutes, you can go and do that, right? I think so. <laughs> because you know how to do that. It's kind of like um, telling a computer guy to, okay, just wire that network over there, you know? Yeah, you can do that. It's like, if I tell, somebody tell me to do that, I'll be like, I'm confident, but I don't know how to do that, right? So like, you have the skill to do that, but, but, for you to do that persistently and consistently, you feel that there's this blockage right in your stomach, right? I think it's my stomach. No, it's it's not like your organ, but like there's like this blockage of flow going through you, right? Yeah. So once we're able to, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, you know, like a like a, imagine like a pipe flowing, and then there's a lot of debris in a certain area of the pipe, and that and then that pushes a lot of pressure in that one point. Right? So when we clear up that that clunk over there, it's going to allow your energy to flow more freely. All right, so uh, let's do some hypnosis. You've been so you've come to the show before, and we've done some hypnosis before, right? And you've also done some hypnosis outside of this show, right? Yes. So you are quite comfortable with going into hypnosis, right? Okay. Um, all right. So I just want you to just, uh, okay, you're sitting in the correct position. Just have your arm. Can I touch you? Yeah. Okay. Just, okay, hold your arms over here. Just relax, relax. Just relax. There you go. Just relax. Relax, relax your joints. Just let it hang there. Let it hang, let it hang, let it hang. There you go. Okay, relax even more. Whatever relaxation that you allow yourself to enjoy it just a minute ago, allow yourself to enjoy that relaxation 10 times more right now. That's right. Just let it hang loose and loose. Just let your, as if your bone have disappeared. It's like the joints are made of liquid. That's right. Relax. Relax. There you go. There you go. See? Doesn't that feel a little bit better than before? So loose and low, loose and low, there you go, there you go, you don't have to hold on to it, yeah, just let go, let go, let go, there you go, there, doesn't that feel a little bit better than before, Just let your arms like hang there. Just hang there, loose, limp, and relax. Like a rag doll. Loose, limp, and relax. There you go. Loose, limp, and relax. Loose, limp, and relax. Loose, limp, and relax. There you go. So you can just let go. Let go of your shoulder. I can tell you're holding on to some tension in your shoulder and your joints. 
the fingers. There you go. Just relax. There you go. There you go. Very well. Nice. I want you to open your eyes. I want you to just focus on the swinging pocket watch right here. Good. Feel the count backwards from three to one. When I reach number one, I want you to just close your eyes and let your mind drift. As soon as you close your eyes, I want you to imagine yourself on a calm, quiet beach. Beach swelling of the pocket watch. You can feel your eyelids getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And you can feel the warm ray of the sun on your cheek, on your nose, and on your hair. Three, two, one. Let go and sleep. Good. Let go. Let go. Let go. And I want you to open your eyes again and watch this pocket watch. Still on this calm, quiet beach. And you can hear the seagulls on top of your head. You can hear the sound of the children playing in the background. That's right. And you can hear the sound of the ocean caresses against the shore. As I count backwards in three, two, one. Good. Let go and sleep really, really deep again. Now with your eyelids closed, you can still see the pocket watch swinging in front of your eyes as you visualize this beautiful beach behind your eyelids. As if you can see through your eyelids, You can see every grain of the sand. You can see the sunset reflected on the ocean. That's right. Everything is so real to you. Three, two, one, sleep really deep again, all the way down, deeper and deeper down. With each number I count, you find yourself sleeping deeper and deeper into the chair, more and more relaxed. That's right. Allow yourself to sink in the chair right now. Four. All the way down into the chair. Three. Relax. Let go. Two. As if you're sinking all the way down to the floor. Two. One. And sleep. Even deeper now. More and more relaxed. Good. Good. Now I'm going to count from one to three. 
and a rich moment for your love, you will open your eyes with your grace. As soon as, as soon as you hear my voice, and only my voice saying, sleep now, I want you to feel a sleepy sensation washing over you. You'll find your eyes slowly rolling to the top of your head. You'll find your eyelids feeling very heavy. As soon as, as soon as you hear my voice, and only my voice says, sleep now, you want to go back into hypnosis, ten times as deep, ten times as comfortable. One, two, three eyes open. So was it hard to find Cambridge? No, actually. Oh, yeah. How long did it take? Uh, sleep no. now. Deeper and deeper. More. Good. Let yourself go. Good. One, two, three, eyes open. Feeling good. So what kind of mushroom uh, have you tried from a foraging? Um, chicken in the woods and... Oh yeah, how does that taste? Like chicken. No, not really. Sleep. Deeper and deeper, more and more relaxed. Let yourself go. Just notice any kind of nervous energy, any tickling sensation in your feel that perfectly normal. Just let it out. Let it go right now. Now open the counts from one to three. When I count to three, you're going to open your eyes and you can look into my eyes. You'll find that all your energy, all your nervous energy are leaving your body through your eyes. And just feel my eyes drawing and draining all the negativity, draining all the anxiousness, draining all the anxiety that you've ever experienced, draining out of your body through your eyes into my eyes. And once you feel all your energy drained, and the more energy drained out of your body and your mind, and the more anxiety got, that got drained out of your body and your mind, you just sleep here and sleep here and sleep here. And when all those energy, all those negativity got drained out of your eyes, you feel so sleepy that you will close your eyes and go back ten times deeper into hypnosis. One, two, three, eyes open. Just look into my eyes and just find your energy, your anxiety, your negativity just pulling out of your body, pulling out of your mind. That's right. Just pulling out of your mind. That's right. So feeling sleepier and sleepier and sleepier. That's right. You just, just feel so relaxed now. Just all the energy is draining out of your mind. Your eyelids getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Good. 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 Very 
and sleep now. Good. Feeling so good. So relaxed. So comfortable. Feeling all the anxious energy, all the negativity just drained out of your mind, out of your body right now. And I want to try this one more time, but instead of opening your eyes, I want you to focus all your energy onto this spot right here. That's right. That's right. I'm going to count from 3 to 1. When I reach number 1, I want you to feel all your anxiousness, all your anxiety. And all negativity that you may be holding on, just drain out of your brain, through my finger, and out of your body. Three, two, one, start draining, draining, draining. That's right, just feel the spot right here. Opening up your mind. That's right. Whatever negative emotions that you may be holding on, and you may or may not know how to describe it, that's fine. Just drain it out of your mind and of your brain, all of this finger right here. That's right. That's right. And you can still feel my touch right on your forehead right here. Long after this session is over. Now, I just want you to imagine that blockage in your stomach in front of you. Whatever that is, just, well, I just want you to feel that blockage is op opening up. And you just feel your entire body enveloping in this white light. And just feel this white light just pushing through this blockage right now. Just pushing through this blockage right now. That's right. And you'll find this process continue on, on and on and on after this session is over. Whenever you feel anxiety in the future, you can just feel that spot in between your eyes right there. And you can feel the excess anxiety, nervousness, negative emotions just drain out of your body and your mind. And at the same time, you can just feel your energy aura just pushing through this blockage. And from now on, in every social situation, you feel yourself much more in the moment, much more at ease, much more relaxed, much more yourself. You find yourself freely enjoying every moment of your life, living your life to the fullest, enjoying every moment to the fullest extent. You feel more alive, more energetic, and you feel your energy expanding on and on and on. That's right. Good. I'm now going to count from 1 to 10. When I reach number 10, I want you to come back to this room feeling fully alert and energized, fully confident, fully relaxed, yet living fully in the moment right now. 1, 2, Three, four, feeling a wave of optimism flowing over you. Six, seven, eight, nine. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Doing great. Take a deep breath in. Feels great, doesn't it? It's feel a little bit different from the moments before. Good, good. So this is all the time we have for tonight. Um, join us next week on CCTV Channel 9 Cambridge. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Good.